Sure. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. I'd like to remind everyone that, uh, thank you, Juan, by the way. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, the Dearborn Open Mic, Mutad al Thaqafi Dearborn, meets the first Wednesday of each month. If there are, is an exception, we usually notify you through uh, our channels. We are dearbornblog.com, we're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, we have YouTube channels in Arabic and English. We are on podcast, uh, if you have an iPhone, it is on iTunes, if you don't, then it is on uh, Stitcher. So uh, many channels, please subscribe to one of them, so you'll be notified about any news. Next, uh, next meeting, uh, we have a special guest, Professor Dr. Sally Howell, who is an expert on Arab Americans in uh, Dear Dearborn in Detroit, and she will be speaking about uh, the history of the uh, Arabs in, in, in this region. I'd like to introduce to you the next uh, guest on the Dear One Open Mic, Nasreen Faraj. Then it was 8 o'clock and he called up someone before me and I was like, alright, 10 minutes, you know. Then I realized we gave a Palestinian the mic and the opportunity to talk about Palestine and I knew I was going to be stuck waiting for a while. But uh, if anyone was here the last time I was here, I actually spoke about how I believe, oh, and I'm 100% Lebanese and I'm very proud of it. Uh, I spoke about how I really feel like in our community, because we have Arabs from all like the Arab countries, I feel like we should be more united. So when things are happening in Palestine or in other countries, if we're Lebanese, if we're Iraqi, whatever we are, we need to support each other more. So yeah, I always like buy these shirts that say Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine and I donate and I help as much as I can. It might not make a difference, but even just supporting it or like when you wear shirts like that, it makes a statement, especially to the people who get annoyed when we wear stuff like that. It makes it even more satisfying to buy the shirts. <laughs> okay. So um, I love writing poetry about anything and everything. And the two poems that I'm going to share today are, um, they're both inspired by students who I met in high school. And they're both uh, like regarding students who had, who struggled with mental health issues. And I wanted to use my opportunity to speak today to address these kinds of issues because I really do feel like in our community it's something that doesn't get enough support. I feel like when students struggle with mental health issues, it's not taken as seriously as it should be. So to anyone here who has like sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, or friends of your family who are in high school, or like maybe even a little younger than, than that, or a little older than that, if you see that they might not be as happy as you think they should be, you don't necessarily have to ask them or get in their business, but like you can try to to connect with them or see how they're doing. I think that's really important, not just as Arabs or as people here, just as, as humans in general, we should be kind to each other. So the first person, the first poem I'm going to share is called The Girl That Draws. It's very short. I wrote it um, two years ago, my sophomore year of high school, and it was about uh, a girl who I, that I met who sell farms. Okay. She gets upset and then she draws with constant reminders of all her flaws. Feeling unloved, she keeps going, trying to refrain her pain from showing. And as she tries, she sees how hard it is and her body has now become her canvas. Under and over, knowing what they each mean, her drawings are hidden in places unseen. Um, the second poem I wrote in the style of a spoken word, and it's called um, it's called One Bullet and Two Choices, and it's written in the perspective of a of a male student who is 
kind of deciding whether or not to take his own life. And I chose to write it in the perspective of a male because I feel like in the media, when we read books or we watch movies, you always see girls who are struggling. But I feel like a lot of times guys do struggle too, but they have to hide it more because it's more frowned upon for a man to feel vulnerable. And it's like not okay, it makes them like less of a man. And we should never make anybody feel like they can't show their emotions because even in our community, we all know it does happen. People do take their own lives, and there's no reason for anyone to ever have to feel that way. Every day was a struggle for him. Every day that he woke up. And his situation could have been helped, but nobody ever spoke up. Every night he had nightmares decreasing his self-esteem, and every day he woke up to the realities of his bad dreams. Never a part of any team, depression eating away at him, always making him want to scream. He tried defending himself, but it never worked. He was alone. So in his room after school one day, he has to make a decision on his own. The boy has one bullet and two choices. One says nothing else can make it go away. He's listening to the voices. If somebody cared, they would have noticed. He's drowning out the background noises. He's only focusing on two sides that are going back and forth. Two says it's a long-term solution for a short-term problem. Two says that the boy will be happy. But the boy disagrees, claiming happiness, is the, claiming happiness is the river that he will never be baptized in. Happiness and the idea of it have been stripped away by those who despise him. Happiness is complex. It has no simple switch to be turned on that lies within. Happiness, he thinks, is not a decision. But then the boy begins to think some more. Back to the last time that the smile on his face was genuine. And though it was long ago, to feel that way again is worth it for him. Enough motivation to make him realize he wants to make it to the next chapter. That he craves his happily ever after. So the boy looks at the gun in his hand, he takes the bullet out and he sets it down. Choice two is the decision. And those who despise him do not win. Thank you.